Joining us now is a man who's our MVP, not only on the field, but off the field, uh, Super Bowl champion and legend of a man. And alongside him, uh, another uh, legend and Super Bowl champion, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers and A.J. Hawk. Yeah! Join us, boys. Uh, great to see you. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday is always a beautiful thing. But today, and I had saved this until now, uh, because I think you two will be able to give a little bit more of a personal side of this thing. Let me lead off here. When I was a kid, uh, my parents took me to Steelers training camp. Okay, as a little child, love love going to Steelers training camp. You know, get the sun on my face. My parents enjoyed us, got us out of the house, and they didn't have to pay attention to us for a while. And afterwards, there was always a signing that happened or pictures taking. And Kevin Green was the last guy that was there the day, one of the days that I went. And I, got, I never asked for pictures with anybody. Uh, my dad or my brother, somebody was like, oh, go get a picture with that guy. Take a picture of me. He was so nice. He high-fived me. And uh, then I kind of like became a fan from that day forward. And I never got to know him personally, but anytime I watched him, on the field, he was electric. In wrestling, he was magnetic. Off the field, I've heard these incredible stories. Yesterday, he passes away. Rest in peace to a legend. I know he won a Super Bowl in Green Bay with you two. Aaron, I'll lead off with you, obviously. Rest in peace to an absolute living legend, huh, Kevin Green? Yeah, it's a tough um, He was the second coach that uh, has passed this year that has been a part of our staff over the years. John Rushing, who was with us for a number of years, and, and I spent a lot of time with John uh, as he was an office and offensive assistant for a long time. Uh, he passed earlier this year. And then yesterday, uh, I got some texts from some former coaches as well who alerted me. KG was one of those special guys, man. Just you loved having him around. Uh, there's so many stories um, of him. You know, Age used to always uh, joke with him about doing a bunch of roids back in the day, <laughs> <laughs> being a wrestler. but. At his heart, man, he's such a such a great human. I mean, he's such a sweet, sweet guy. Intense, you know, always talking about Cobra Strike, and you know, he got that voice. And he, you know, it's basically he, he was taking, you know, his personality. It seemed like in the in the ring was the exact same personality that he coached with, and and just a, a sweet guy. He used to love like playing pre-practice catch with me and Matt Flynn. And I remember, especially in 2010, he would get out get out there early and love playing catch with Matt, and he would commentate the entire thing like. You know, like, nice shot. Like, oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was the sweetest ever. Oh, if I didn't catch, he would have broke my face. You know, he's just literally a kid in a candy store playing pre-practice catch with Matt Flynn. And I used to just love to get out there and just watch him and just listen to what he was saying. Um, but he was instrumental in the, in what we did that year. Um, such a fun guy. We used to go back and forth and, and give each other shit uh, and inside jokes at practice. But uh, just uh, – and so much fun to be around. Great wife who sang the anthem uh, at our stadium a few times. Got to know his kids, especially Gavin. Gavin was working in the uh, in the equipment room a couple of the training camps. Um, you know, definitely will miss him. And, and uh, it's definitely a big loss for the sports world. And for, for anybody who was around, Kevin just knows how special he was. By the way, it feels like, and thank you for that. I just felt like I got to learn. It feels like yesterday, although everybody was sad, there was just like these incredible stories coming out of it. From the wrestling world, people were like, man, when he was around, just everybody was lifted. AJ, was he a hands-on coach with you day to day? Well, so KG coached outside backers. So I was playing inside in the three, four. So I actually got, was able to become, I think, closer with him because he wasn't my direct like position coach. You know that, Pat, how you can see yeah. the, have like a better, not better, but in the moment because he's not the guy grading my film. But in KG sat right next to me. So I was on the aisle of our defensive meeting room. He was sat in a chair on the steps right next to me and just he would always lean over. If he saw, he was all, he loved finding things that nobody else would see like on film, like in practice. If I, if I went downhill and dug out a puller or something and blasted him, but then somebody else made the player in a game, he would just lean over like, A to the J. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and he called me A to the J for whatever reason, and I loved it. It was the greatest thing ever. But, uh, yeah, it's, he's such a rare dude to mix, like a Hall of Fame player, and he's also like the most high-character dude on the planet. It's just uh, it's unreal. Like, it's terrible. It sucks. Like, his family's amazing. I remember his wife singing the anthem. KG was saluting. I think he was crying a little bit. Like, yeah, just overall one of the best humans ever.
All right. Well, rest in peace to KG. Job well done. It sounds like from every human in every single particular part of the world that met him. Uh, I wish I got a chance to be in a locker room with a man that had to eight to the J. I saw that. <laughs> like, I wish I could have been there for that. That would have been, that would have been incredible. Uh, Aaron, short week here uh, with the holiday. We appreciate you joining us. No time's going to come up pretty quick here. But I wanted to talk to you about a couple things that happened on Saturday. Uh, uh, was Saturday game weird at all? Change your life at all last week? Uh, I mean, it was strange, a short week, and the defense that we played was a different alignment than, I mean, most teams you're going to see in the league. A lot of uh, a lot of dime personnel, a lot of three three five kind of sets, some weird uh, fronts, and stuff, uh, of really making it hard on your on your points in the run game. And and they their plan was to take Devontae out. They didn't really single him up much of the game. So. You know, we ran the ball really well. Jonesy had a big game. We just hit a low there in the third quarter and couldn't quite get things uh, back going. But, you know, it's a good win for us. Any win at this point of the season is important. We, you know, obviously got some help from the uh, from the Jets and the Chiefs over the weekend. Um, and, you know, we have a lot to play for the last couple of weeks. You guys did drop in the power rankings, though. Oh, I don't know oh, you guys yeah. did. I mean, you might have got some help from those two teams, but you guys <laughs> dropped in the power <laughs> rankings. One more quick one here. Um, the belt came back. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I mean, not a lot of enthusiasm, but the belt did come back mm -hmm. while you're getting crowned. So I want to let you know just a big thank you to me before AJ gets to his question. Oh. Yeah, yeah I, I, I want to go to the belt. What made you bring it back? Like, okay, did you think of Pat or Nick or anyone, any of the boys, or maybe Ty, when you did the belt or before? Ty, uh, yeah, definitely Ty. You know, I think there's been some there, there's been some uh, conversation on the squad about my rushing touchdown from the previous week and how, uh, you know, guys give me some shit for being too tired to, you know, really celebrate it all. Uh, so this week I wasn't as tired. It was a shorter drive and a, and a shorter run. You know, I really just moved him in the pocket and there was nobody around. So I felt like that could be a good time to uh, to do something. I was running kind of all over the place. I, you know, thought I had a run solution on one play and it turned into like a, a QB lead draw. Uh, and if, you know, Jonesy made a block, I might have scored. You know, it might have been 50 yard, 50 yard rushing touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I thought AJ was going to ask you about this immediately upon seeing it on television. Are you just uh, you just gonna eat those smelling salts, huh? You had one, maybe the closest I've ever seen one to somebody's nose, and you didn't. Your face didn't change at all. Normally, the eyes go, the the whole face goes. You seem to just be like, yeah, yeah, all right, that's good, and then just walk out there. Is that a every game tradition? And how can you just eat ammonia like that? Well, you know, Pat, I'm sure because you probably snorted some of those over the years, but uh, each one is a little different. You know, some of the ones are really, really strong and you can barely get it up to your nose and you're just, you know, and then some of them you can't, they don't have the same type of potency. So it just depends. That one probably didn't have a lot of potency, but most of the time you're really, whoa, you know, really uh, kind of waking up on this. I only do those every now and then when uh, you know, maybe it spends a little bit of time on the bench or something. I need a little... You know. <laughs> <laughs> the wakey wake how you doing keep it moving especially with no crowd i would assume the ammonia has been a tag team for a lot more people than expected ty's got a great question i'm pumped for this answer too by the way yeah aaron we all saw that uh zadarius smith got press and smith a new car uh were you like kind of orchestrating that like so that you could maybe we can it's like hey boxyari stop being a cheapskate you see what these guys are doing maybe get me my car for christmas uh not necessarily but indirectly i think it's really helped me uh, just the added pressure that's put on on dave uh i will say it's been great to see that uh rekindling of the smiths you know they they used to do every uh, press conference together they're the smith bros and then you know p's been giving uh z some shit about not doing the interviews together anymore it's because of zoom and then and I guess they're asking P too much about why he was dropping, you know, more than he wanted to. So, <laughs> so stop doing interviews together. But I think everything is, you know, really good now, and they're they're definitely gelling together after that uh, that car thing. And and I think it's just an example of what it can do for relationships. Yeah. Uh, when somebody you know spends a little bit of money on their teammates. Well, and that's something to talk to you. You should definitely think about. And I, I think that's a good example by your teammates to lead into this giving season, especially if you're the highest paid guy ever at your position. And that's just something that, to think about. Let's talk about a guy, though, that kind of got screwed in the back. Big Bob Tunyon. You know what I mean? I don't believe in Pro Bowl snubs. 
specifically because if you believe in those, then you believe in the Pro Bowl to begin with. And if you put too much power in fake awards, you know, you can't really. And, and I've been snubbed enough to get to this point, right? It had to happen a couple different times where I was like, all right, this is all bullshit if I didn't make it. And you, you kind of get to that at some point. But as a younger guy trying to make his name, a Pro Bowl is a big deal for a guy. Big Bob Tunyon has had a hell of a year, 10 tuds, the whole thing. He didn't make it. But I would assume you're telling him, like, it does not matter. Let's just go ahead and win a Super Bowl instead. Is that your message for Big Bob? That would be. I mean, I haven't talked to him about it yet. I think I was surprised by Elton making it, not because he didn't deserve it, just because young guys don't usually make it in the year they should make it a lot of times because they might not have the same uh, name recognition that is that is needed uh, to get in. And you see that every single year. There's there's guys who make it uh, based on the meritocracy and, and guys who make it based on uh, their name uh, recognition. And I don't understand, you know, why Bob didn't get in. It was, in, in my opinion, a no-brainer, especially, you know, look at the NFC, and there's a lot of good tight ends, but with Kittle being out most of the season, and then Bob's numbers this year, having 10 touchdowns and playing so consistently for us every week, I thought he might even be the starter. Uh, so, yeah, I'm bummed out for him because the individual awards are, you know, they do feel good, even if it's the Pro Bowl. Obviously, the All-Pro is, uh, you know, is a little sweeter. Just ask Bakhtiari about that, I think, but <laughs> But the Pro Bowl, especially, uh, you know, for young guys being able to go out there for the first time is is, uh, is pretty sweet. And uh, there's no game this year, but, uh, you know, Robert definitely deserved it. Hey, do you feel like you are solely responsible for landing Scott Stapp that role as uh, Frank Sinatra in the upcoming Ronald Reagan biopic? Comeback season for Scott Stapp. Oh, yeah. Oh, comeback season. I mean, what a great year, right? Like a lot of pub with the uh, – you know, the recycling of that halftime show that he did. Uh, Kyle Brandt had him on his podcast. Yep. A lot of people got to see, you know, how my man is doing now in 2020, like 20 years from being the guy in all of America. <laughs> and now he's going to play Sinatra. Come on. I mean, it's been a tough year for a lot of people. Scott Staff, not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, before we let you go, and we can't thank you enough, uh, do you view yourself kind of like a stand-up comedian? No. Okay, let me tell you why. Your delivery of the same answers numerous times has been amazing to watch on an NFL Instagram Live. It was unbelievable. You hit a home run on there with Kay, by the way. I watched that whole interview. I was so damn impressed by both of you guys. Well, I'm not a, I'm not a repeating robot uh, cliche-written interview and that's True. i think that's why some people enjoy this show you guys enjoy having me on i enjoy this show because it's you know way more than than you, what you usually get from some uh, some of the, uh, the interview type shows but uh but Kay's really good i mean i think they do a great job and i meant what i said about i think the beauty in their show and i love all four of them is that they really do use positivity in in a world where negativity sells they consistently use positivity to highlight people and don't need to thrash people or, or, you know, go after people to try and get clicks. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. And I did appreciate, uh, uh, you know, that interview with her. And, you know, I think that's what people want to ultimately want to see. They, you know, they don't want to see a bunch of like one game at a time, take care of things I can control. You know, they want to see some authenticity and some realness. And, and I appreciate the opportunity like I do every single week on this one. Um, but negativity sells and, and, I don't know if you saw it, but I saw a little four-minute video that Dana White put out today. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I think, I think some of the points that he highlighted, besides obviously the fact that UFC's had a good year, but negativity is at the heart of way too much uh, media coverage, and that's why um, I do appreciate uh, you know Good Morning Football. That's why I love what you guys do in your show, because you don't need to bash people or slam people or have a 30 minute bitch sesh where I buried the you, know, you take a side and H takes a side and Ty is a side and one of the other boys is a side and you just go round and round and round. I think it's beautiful that we can talk about things. We can highlight great, uh, great humans and, and do it in a, in a way that can still get people to watch the show and enjoy it and love it. Um, I think that that's what we need more of in society is more you know, positivity and love and less, you know, clickbait and negativity and slamming people to try and, you know, get people to watch a snippet of your video. So I, kudos to you guys, your staff. Obviously, I have a lot of uh, respect for both you two gentlemen and, and the boys. And, you know, in a, in a Christmas year, um, coming off of Thanksgiving, where I think it's important to really think about uh, the blessings that we do have 
um, and not focus on what we don't have. I am very thankful for you guys, for this show, for the opportunity to have this Tuesday uh, the entire year. It's been so much fun for me. And I'm not going to say that it's the reason why we've played so well and I've had uh, a good season, but I can definitely say that it's been a positive contributor the entire year, and I, I do have a lot of thanks and, and, and gratitude for that. Aaron, thank you, Aaron. Thank you. No, no, no. no don't don't no, you no, thank no. us. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, thank you for coming on the show. We appreciate you on here. I feel like I've learned so much about not only you, but life and football. And uh, the negative way is easy, by the way. It's a pretty easy, like people think it's like, what we do is the easiest thing. And I, I, I do hear this from executives in the world about how whenever you try to be funny or upbeat or entertaining, like that's an easy way to do it. Whenever you gotta do the professional, like that shit's easy. So whenever people start taking the negative route, just know that that's them taking the easy way out as opposed to highlighting things that are positive and making riveting content. And every single Tuesday you come on here, the whole world reacts to it because of how incredible you are. So thank you for coming on our show. And as a follow-up, do you think that because you care about winning the MVP award that the Packers are potentially going to lose football games. Oh, I no. mean, it is embarrassing to think like that. You care about winning the MVP and said it would be cool. So that's how this conversation ends for sure, dude. See ya. <laughs> yeah, sorry for Karen. <laughs> <laughs> that happened on uh, that happened last week, by the way. Have a great practice. We appreciate the hell out of you, man. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. We'll see you next week. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Love you guys, and uh, hope I get my vanquish. So, yeah. Hey, we love you too, man. Everybody. Love you, pal. Thank you, 